Hello everyone, it's the spring of 2018 and my name is Evan Henry. I've been working on a video project that I wanted to share with you. This video focuses on the accomplishments of George Henry. I'm filming this introduction without his presence because he would rather not have attention drawn to himself. He's a modest man. But the purpose of this project is to highlight some of the notable accomplishments of my dad's working career. If you were at his birthday party in August of 2017, you might remember my saying that working, while working with my daughter Cindy and her husband Ronnie on their recent remodeling project, I became aware that she knew little information about what Grandpa George did in his earlier years. She knew that he was a carpenter by trade and that he was always ready to help on family projects but she did not know the magnitude of his career accomplishments. I had just assumed that she knew what Grandpa did in his earlier years, but when I thought about it, I realized that she, like most of her cousins, was very young when Dad retired. And at that party, I challenged everyone to ask Dad questions over the next year about what he did during his working career. Now, Dad's rather quiet, and he probably won't offer much information without some prying, so it's my hope that this written information, the pictures that I've included, and the videos might help with that very task. Now, depending on your relationship, you might call him George. You might call him husband, friend, brother, dad, or Grandpa George. That's what my grandkids like to call him. But from here on out, I will refer to him as dad because that is my relationship to him. No matter what your relationship, we can all be proud of dad's accomplishments. On a much smaller scale, I followed Dad's career choice and supervised many construction projects. He was a super tough act to follow. In the early years, I was often reminded by fellow workers, men that knew Dad, that I wasn't doing it quite the way that he would have done it. It seemed that everybody in the local construction industry knew Dad. And he was very well known for his knowledge, his honesty, his fairness, and the fact that he would never ask anyone to do something that he wouldn't do himself. Now, Dad has been retired now for over 25 years, and it's rare that I run into anyone who was fortunate enough to work with him. I actually never got to work with him very often on commercial projects. I got to work with him more on family projects. I did have the opportunity to work with him at the Marriott's Hotel project, the Crow Chiswick Building project, and also Walt Disney Elementary School renovation project. On those projects, I saw firsthand while he was so much respected. I think Alan Limerick, my brother-in-law and dad's son-in-law, actually got to work with him more than I ever did. Alan is also a carpenter and a superintendent and has supervised many sizable projects. His son, Joel Limerick, is now doing the same thing. Now, I apologize for the formality and for the use of last names, but keep in mind that someone might stumble across this information years from now and not know who I'm writing about if I leave out the last names. Please keep in mind that this information is being provided to highlight the major projects and demonstrate the magnitude of Dad's accomplishments during his career. Many of us drive by these buildings today and don't even know that he was the man who coordinated and managed the construction of these large projects. He will always be the first to remind us that he was just one person and there were many men who made it happen, not just him. I hope that you find this information useful. If not today, maybe someday. Keep in mind that I'm not doing this for a grade. I'm not a writer and I'm severely challenged when it comes to technology, especially videography. I don't know how this project's gonna turn out. It's my hope to provide some written information, some pictures, and maybe some live video of Dad. I hope it goes well and that the content is well received by everyone who sees it. Now the dates on the following pages and the dates that are mentioned in the videos are approximate and the projects mentioned may not be in the exact order of completion. Many of the smaller projects aren't even mentioned due to the large number of Dad's accomplishments. Let's start off just by listing a few of Dad's major employers. Now keep in mind that Dad was born in 1930 and he graduated from high school in 1948. And after high school, 
from 1948 to 1951, he worked at Studebaker Manufacturing Company in South Bend, Indiana. Then in 1952 to 1956, he worked for Morton Construction, who was primarily a home building contractor. And then in 1957 to 1992, he was a member of the Carpenters Union Local 413 out of South Bend, Indiana. He worked for multiple union contractors, including Roseland Construction, Hickey Construction, Solid Construction, Ermshire Construction, and Cast Steel Construction. And then from 1988 to 1992, while remaining in the union, the last few years of his career were dedicated to Penn Harris Madison School Corporation projects, and he was actually on Penn Harris Madison's payroll. Moving on, let's talk just a little bit about Dad's career opportunities and responsibilities throughout the years. I mentioned earlier that after high school, Dad worked at Studebaker's for a few years on the factory assembly line and also in the machine shop. He soon learned that confinement inside of a factory building was not for him. And inspired by a desire to work with his hands, he decided to pursue a career in carpentry. Now his grandfather Martin, on his mother's side, had been a carpenter who actually worked on the Notre Dame Golden Dome. Now in those days, wooden scaffolding was used instead of steel scaffolding. Carpenters would actually build the wooden scaffolding as the job progressed. But in Dad's early years as a carpenter, he worked for Morton Construction and was involved with primarily residential home building. Well, after a few years of that, he soon learned that this too could become repetitious. Just ask him sometime about building hip roofs and how many of them he did. He also became annoyed by the multiple changes requested during the course of a residential project. So, later he worked for Roseland Construction, where he mostly was involved with insurance and restoration work. Fire, wind, water damage, those type of things. Well, as his skills were honed, he worked for other contractors and began to work in commercial construction, eventually arriving at a level where he was very much respected as a construction manager and or a construction superintendent on large multi-million dollar projects. This page, page three, lists many of the projects that Dad worked on, but certainly not all of them. I will use this list of projects later when Dad and I have a discussion around his kitchen table. I will also include this list as an attachment at the end of this digital video. Well, thank you for listening to my introduction, which is part one of this video, and I look forward to sharing part two, where we will sit around Dad's kitchen table and talk about some of his projects, and also part three, which I'll call On the Road, where Dad and I will actually visit several of his past projects. Well, we'll see you then. Thanks. Hello everybody, I'm Evan and I'm sitting here with mom and dad at their kitchen table and we're getting ready to discuss some of the highlights of dad's working career. And uh, let's begin with talking about some of the places that you worked through the years. First of all, you were born in 1930 and you graduated in 1948 and I'm sure you had a few jobs uh, when you were still in school. Can you tell me a little bit about that, dad? Yeah, I... I uh had a paper route for one. Uh, I was still in school and uh, I, I worked at uh, Cheney's drugstore. Here's here's a picture of dad on this paper that, route. That, that's a picture of my uh, dog and sled that uh, he carried the papers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I went to work for Cheney's drugstore. Do you remember the dog's name by chance? Tippy. Tippy. Yeah. And Tippy pulled a sled in the winter and a wagon in the summer, huh? Is that true? No, he didn't pull, pull a wagon. He just pulled a sled. You made him pull the sled in the summer, yeah. too? 
No, I didn't, I didn't make him fall asleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Where else did you work before you graduated from high school? Um, I, I, I worked at... Uh, um, the drugstore? The one drugstore, day? yes. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what was the name of the drugstore? Do you it remember? Was, it was Cheney's Drugstore. And uh, he trusted me so much that he gave me the key and I opened up in the morning and and uh, he closed at night then. Okay. What did you do? Did you fill prescriptions there? Or? No, I didn't fill prescriptions. <laughs> what did I, you do? I was uh, in charge of the papers. I had to go get the papers at the post office. And, and uh, make sure they were on the rack, and and then uh, sometimes I was a soda jerk. And uh, what's a soda jerk? Uh, well, they had a, a fountain, yeah. and uh, guys used to come in, and uh, Doc Linton was one of them, and Sandy Newsbaum was another, and they used to always come in with their dime, and ask for a coke. You could buy a coke for a dime, yeah, huh? You could buy a coke for a dime, and it was in a <laughs> Glass, uh, Coke glass with ice, and, and uh, they usually uh, swallowed it down and away they went. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was there any other place? I know you worked on a few farms baling hay and things like that, but yeah, that's I, probably not good memories there. <laughs> yeah, I worked for uh, Stanky, baling, riding the hay balers. That, in them days, it was a three-man baler, and, hmm. and you had two guys in the back, and, and you eat all the dust and tied the wires, and now it's all automatic. <laughs> One man can do the job now. Yeah. Did you have any other jobs before you graduated then that come to mind? No, I can't think of any right offhand. Okay. Well, you graduated in 1948. Here's a, here's a picture of you. Oops. Here's a senior picture of you. Dashingly handsome young man. It looks like you could have been a model, but yeah, that's... I, I had hair then. <laughs> that wasn't your career choice to be a model. You you decided to do other things. Now I might mention. I hope this is true, Mom. I didn't ask you ahead of time. This is Dad's senior picture, but it looks like one that you actually add color to. Is that true? No, I did not do that one. Well, I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> but. You did a lot of that on a lot of pictures. In fact, you worked at Robertson's doing that. Is that true? Yep. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll cover that in a in another video someday. I hope to do one about Mom and some of the, the notable things that she did. And then um, also then, in 1948, you graduated, and your first job was at Studebaker's. Is that true? Yep. First real job, if you will? That's true. And that was short-lived from about 1948 to 1950. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But in 1950, um, you, you found your bride. Here's a wedding picture from 1950. Mom and Dad. Yeah. I still got her. You still got her after how many years would that be? <laughs> uh, I don't know. They never taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> what, it be? what would it 68. be? 68 this year, yep. Yeah. And that was, uh, what's your wedding date? You remember? January 1st. Never forgot it. He had to pick an easy one so he could always remember that. Yeah. 1950. <laughs> 1950, January 1st. And then um, about that time then, you did work at Studebaker first off from 1948 to 51. What kind of things did you do there? Uh, I worked out an aviation plant on the truck line. And the rear springs on these big Two-ton trucks were so darn heavy, it took two of us guys to lift them. And uh, they usually picked the new guys for that job. <laughs> but I didn't I didn't stay on it too long. They moved me down the line. I, I was kind of light for that. <laughs> a little bit too heavy a work for you, yeah. huh? I know you also worked at, um, like in the, was it Tool Crib? Or what was it? No, in the machine shop, wasn't the it? Machine shop, yeah. Yeah. And that got boring because it was repetition, the same thing over and over uh, on a piston line. So and is that primarily why you chose to leave, it just too much repetition? Yes, mainly. That was 
because I know your father worked there. Was it forty six years, Grandpa? Yeah, Grandpa Everett Henry. Yeah, was it that? Was, and then he got pretty upset when I left, but he got over it. <laughs> they wouldn't even sell me a new car at that time. That was back when cars were hard to get, and he got one. They wouldn't sell me one because you had to be there a year, and uh, I wasn't there a year yet. So. Uh, so, so the Studebaker days were kind of short-lived for you. Yeah. And you decided to move on into carpentry. Yeah. And who was the first person that you worked for when uh, you decided to do that? I worked for Morton, Morton Construction. Morton Construction. And that was primarily about 1952 to 1956. And what did, what did uh, Morton Construction do mostly? It, it was mainly houses, and they got so it was repetition and... It was, same thing over and over again, and I got tired of that. So, I uh, Her Harold Harold Kaser stopped by and wanted to know if I was interested in going to work uh, with him. So I went to work for uh, Roseland Construction, and I was there nine years. You were there for nine years with Roseland. Yeah. So Roseland Construction was a union carpenter, so you joined the union somewhere yeah. along 1957, 56, 57. Yeah. Yes. And that would be the South Bend local union 413, the carpenters union. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And while you were there uh, in the union, uh, that pretty much took you through clear to 1992 when you uh, retired. But you worked for a variety of contractors. You, you mentioned Roseland already. You started there, and they were primarily, what did they do, it, type of construction? Mainly, they did insurance work. So it was something different every day, and that's what I liked. And uh, then they got kind of low on work, and they asked if anybody would want to go to work for uh, uh, another contractor. and. I was one of the first ones to raise my hand, and, <laughs> and so I got chose to go to Hickey Construction, which I never was sorry for, and they were one of the uh, best contractors I worked for, uh, especially Don. Uh, and, and we'll go over some of the projects that you did in a few minutes for Hickey Construction. But what are some of the other contractors that you worked for once you joined the union? Yeah, I worked. I worked for Solid then. After Hickey's, I think I worked um, nine or ten years. I think for no, maybe more. I don't remember. Well, we'll cover that in a minute yeah. when we go over the list of projects that yeah. you did. But you also worked for another contractor. Yeah, that... Solid went out of business, and Hermshire out of Fort Wayne took over. Uh, solids projects and i was on uh, elm road school at that time okay and uh, then i worked for cat steel after i retired <laughs> and, oh they didn't have to pay you then huh uh, no they had to pay me <laughs> but part-time work then Vern was one of my buddies and and i worked with him when i worked at hickey's and uh he he talked me into coming to work because it's Times were real busy then. You couldn't even hire a good carpenter. That's why they hired me, I guess. <laughs> you weren't their first choice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did a project at the hospital. Okay. And then while you were still in the union, uh, you went on to work actually on Penn Harris Madison's um, payroll while remaining in the union. Yeah. And we're going to go over some of the jobs. I think the next thing I want to do is to um, go to page three in my outline, and all these pages will be attached at the end of the uh, at the end of this video, so you can reference them later. Dad, I'm going to ask you to scoot over just a hair. Looks like we're losing you for some reason. That's better. And um, right now, what I'd like to do, um, and hopefully I won't forget to hold them up. I want to just go down through this list of all the different projects that you've done. Now, let me correct myself. It's not all of them because there are just too many to mention. But this is some of the ones that came to mind when I asked Dad to help me create a list. And um, the first one we've already talked about where you primarily worked as a carpenter, 
doing the residential housing projects for Morton. And that was uh, 52 to 56. And another one of the projects that you remember doing for Morton was Thorpe Boat Sales Building. And I don't know where that was, but that was one that you mentioned. Where was that? It was out on uh, the way to uh, the mall. The uh, University Park Mall? Yes. Okay. You go by it every time you go out there. Is it on what we call Grape Road then? or I think it's 23. Oh, okay. Well, you'll have to show me sometime. Yeah. Um, we're going to do some videos later. Um, I doubt if we'll be able to stop at nearly all of these at all, um, but we'll stop at some of them. Um, you already mentioned from 57 to 66 then you went on to work for Roseland, and that was primarily as a carpenter, not a superintendent yet. Is that yeah, true? That's true. And you did the fire restorations primarily? Yeah, and I worked mainly with Harold Kaser, and, and then Dan came along, and he worked with us too. That would be Dan Kaser, the next generation, yeah. who went on to, we kind of swapped back and forth generations. Uh, Dad worked for Harold Kaser. Dan Kaser worked with and for Dad. And then I worked for Dan Kaser when he owned his own company for 27 years. Uh, I mean, I worked there 27 years. And my wife, Patty, worked there also for at least nine years, maybe 11, I don't recall. So we kind of, and then Dan's son worked for me, so we just swapped back and forth generations. But anyway, enough about me. This is uh, about you. Um, once you went to work for Hickey's then, um, I don't have pictures of all these projects, but what was the first one that you remember doing? Mm, one of the first ones, anyway. It was a uh, HUD housing project, and it was uh, 98 units, Whoa. but there was seven different locations in Elkhart. And it kept Harold and I busy just running from one to the other. I imagine it would with 98 yeah. different homes to build. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you stop me anytime you want to elaborate on something here. But I'm going to just keep going down the list. Um, also, while still working as a carpenter for Hickey's, you worked at the St. Mary's College Science Building Project in South Bend. Yeah, I worked as a... A saw man then. I worked in the saw shed for Rocky Miscavige and uh, uh, I, I don't remember what I, I remember he had his two brothers as carpenter foremans and uh, I, don't, I don't know how much you want me to tell about but anyway uh, It's your video <laughs> Hank was the one that always come in and, in a hurry and told you what he wanted. And then he would leave and then he'd come back and say, that isn't what I told you. So I got so, I wrote everything down and I hung it on a nail. And I said, there's what you told me and that's what I did. So you had to document everything yeah. just for proof, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, what, where were we? Oh. Notre Dame Powerhouse Edition, you were working with your tools primarily then, and this is about 1967. Um, again, if you want to say anything about any of these projects, you well, can stop one, me. One of the things I remember about that is Alan decided to leave his job with the state and become a carpenter. And he came out on my job at Notre Dame Powerhouse and he was only there two hours, and Rocky come and got him and took him downtown and took him away from me. So uh, I, only, I only had him for two hours. So. Well, that that might have been, unless I got something out of sequence, Alan would have only been 14 years old at that time. <laughs> now, maybe I got something out of order, or it was the powerhouse edition that Alan helped you with. Does that sound more like yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so... So, Alan, I know you're a hard worker, but I don't think he started no. working at, night at 14 years old. No. That's all right. Um, don't want to contradict you, but I think we got something wrong there. You also worked at the Notre Dame Science Building remodel in 1968. And then uh, that pretty much was a turning point after that project 
From there on, I have you listed pretty much as a superintendent for Hickey Construction. Yeah. And, and that pretty much means um, instead of working with his tools, for those of you that have never worked construction, he turned into supervision and he, what we call, ran the project as a superintendent. And one of the first projects I remember, and I think it's actually one of the first ones you ever did for Hickey's, where you were a superintendent, was... Um, a bridge. Can you tell me a little bit about that yeah, bridge? What's the name a, of it? It was a pedestrian bridge on Chapin Street <coughs> that went Excuse up me. and over uh, from the housing project, went across Chapin Street, and it still stands today. And uh, I actually got some, some pictures of this, Dad, and I'm going to hold it in front of the camera. They won't be able to see you, but you can peek around the corner if you want. Um, hopefully that's the right one. Some of these are recent pictures get it just right here some of them are recent pictures and a few of them are you only had two of the original construction yeah, that's that's it over there yep that's the bridge um and this one right here by my finger is, is like showing the whole bridge and that's a recent prick picture that we actually took when we were doing videos i gotta tell you about this one this one here is, is when we were Working on overtime that night with a crane, setting the last part of the bridge, and we, Mom baked a cake and brought it up there, and I had some pretty tough iron workers working for me, and we fed them ice cream and cake. And Joe Hickey, the word got back to the office about it, and... Here come Joe Hickey out there with a camera. And I thought, uh oh, here's my last job. But he didn't. He laughed about it. <laughs> I'm going to elaborate on that just a little bit. Why don't you get a drink? You're getting a little scratchy there. Um, I, I remember that day. I would have been, what, seven or eight years old. Well, maybe a little older than that. But I had a dentist appointment that day and actually was in the car when mom dropped off that cake. Now, again, for those of you who don't work construction, construction workers are kind of stereotyped as being a rough bunch, all a bunch of beer drinking, uh, guys that whistle at all the girls walking by. But um, dad obviously is not that type of a person. And normally when you top out a building, you top out a building, you have a topping out party. And that's kind of what this was that day, is it not? Yes, it was. But instead of having a big... They wanted beer. But yeah, they wanted a beer bash, but instead of doing that, Dad had Mom bring a cake in, right? Cake, cake and, and ice, ice cream. cream. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mom's, Mom's sitting across from us right now. She excused herself from the camera. But if I remember right, that cake was a project in itself. It was built to look like the bridge. I'm hoping that we can find a picture later. Um, hope to do a video of some of mom's cake projects in the days to come. Um, I'm going to ask you to scoot over here a little okay. bit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I do remember that. And it was, uh, it made an impression on me as a young man, you know, that dad was wanting to have the party and celebrate the fact that they had topped out on this bridge, but it, it was uh, a party that, had cake and ice cream instead of the traditional beer bash. So anything else you want to add? We got some video that you're going to see in the next segment uh, of that bridge. We visited it, and in case I forgot to mention it, uh, Dad and I just visited it the other day and took the videos. After 50 years, it's been 50 years since that bridge was built, we could not find one crack in the concrete. So Hickey Construction, as well as Dad and all the workers he had, must have done a really good job. And uh, I think the warranty has long since expired, but we couldn't find a crack anywhere, could we? No. <laughs> the, thing, the thing that I remember most about it was I had problems with it, where it flared out at the top, turned the top where it met the bridge. And I had Rocky out there, and I had... Vern Castile out there, and both of them walked away and said, you figure it out. <laughs> I, I never did forgive them for that. <laughs> no, but it made you think about it, and, and it was a turning point where you took the bull by the horns and made it happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
And it's still standing. <laughs> and still in good shape. Anything else about the Chapin Street Bridge? No, I, uh, I, I can remember a few things. Uh, I had a labor, we called him Big Daddy. And, oh, yes. And he, he was a concrete man, and he would always say, I'll stay there till it gets dark, <laughs> but after it gets dark, I'm gone, because he... It's a pretty rough neighborhood out there at that time. It was pretty rough in its day. That was, yeah. uh, again, right near the intersection of Chapin and Western Avenue, yeah. right by what is now the Croc Center, for those of you that are yeah, familiar it, with that. It was just a park at that time. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. Croc Center? Yeah. Anyway, um, Dad, at the risk of running out of camera battery, I think we better move on. One of the next projects that you did that I have listed anyway, there was probably a few in between, but you spent some time down in Culver, Indiana. Where did you spend your time at down there? Yeah, I spent some time at Dalton Foundry. And uh, the thing that I'm... That's down here farther. Let's back up to uh, this one right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Culver Military Academy. The thing that I remember most about that was you know, water problems, and uh, they ended up having to uh, fill half the basement with pea gravel and uh, not use not use the basement. Really? Yeah. Because of water table problems. Water table. Huh? It just I, I I don't know how many pumps I wore out pumping water <laughs> to get the concrete in, but. I know that Culver Military Academy, uh, maybe not for everybody that's seeing this video, but they're very well known nationwide. It's nothing to see the, the Black Horse Troop on Culver Military, from Culver Military Academy on the parades, the holiday parades that you watch on television. They're very well known. And uh, Dad did not have very many pictures of during the construction of the project. I was able to download a few online and I'm going to hold up the picture board here. Again, I have to back up a little. Well, there's two things I remember about that. And that was at, at them doors right there. They were big, heavy doors, two and a half inches thick. Why? And they followed the arch of the, the, the radius of the, of the stone. Uh-huh. And when uh, Dale Holderman and, and Dan Caser hung them they hung them fine but they went to open and they wouldn't open <laughs> did they swell up or what no they hit the they hit the top of the stone oh dear yeah well wood's easier to cut than stone so i assume they trimmed the doors right yep yeah i, I had an answer the next day from the <laughs> architect because uh, he was baffled I'll be. and uh, he come up with the idea of cutting the doors and and uh, the parts that i cut we uh, dressed it all up nice and put some uh, false fasteners on there and uh, made it look like it was meant to be. Good deal. But, uh, that building front and center there that I'm kind of moving up towards, that is the horse, what do you call that building? I mean, that's the... That's where the horses and that are. Yeah, that's where the horses are. Yeah, and there's a picture of the horse stall inside. Actually, it was a show-off room in the front. To, over the part that we added on, it was a show-off room for their trophies of all the trophies that they had won. And it was... Uh, <coughs> it gave you an idea they had white carpet, so it gives you an idea of what... They had white carpet? Yeah. They but had the white. horses weren't in there, I hope. No. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, and I know you did some other projects down at uh, Culver. Some clear back when you were working for, what is it, um, Morton? or You did well, some housing down there, didn't you? Five houses or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did five houses down there. Was that for Morton or Roseland? Yeah, that was for Morton, yeah. Okay. That was in the early days. Of... No pictures of those, so. And then you also did no. some work on... A uh, gymnasium and some dorms, and I don't have pictures of those, but yeah. but uh, you spent some a few years down there. I've done I know three and a half years. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. But the union kind of priced themselves out of a job. Is that what happened there? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's move on. If unless you got something else you want to add, I'd like to keep going. We got a long list ahead yeah. of us here. Um, I know you uh, spent some time at AM General. Now we can't get in there because they do government work. And we can't get in there to do any live video. Uh, one of the bigger projects you did though was uh, something you did between two existing buildings. What what'd you do there? Yeah, it was. Uh, we put a roof over. Uh, this section, I forget how wide it was, but it was pretty wide. and uh, Kind of long, too, wasn't it? it how was, long it was, was that a, roof? It was 1,025 feet, <laughs> and then we built addition on the end of that as, as you went into it. Yeah. yeah, and I think I got only a couple pictures. Uh, I, I shared a board with that. I'll just zoom in on those. Oh, kind of hard to do. Um, this is AM General. Dad, you haven't even seen these pictures, but shows a crane working there, and then also uh, what appears to be the two buildings before the roof was built. Would you agree? Is that what that is? These. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It shows you how long it was <laughs> and how wide it was too. It yeah. was a big area that you covered um, that had been out of doors, and you added a roof to it. So. Um. Next one on the list is actually the Notre Dame power plant, and that's the one where I think Alan may have uh, stepped in and started his career as a as a construction worker. Yeah. I don't have any pictures or anything of that. Um, I know you worked many projects with Alan after that. Uh, the next one that I do have some pictures of and was kind of a turning point was the IBM building. Now. I'm going to hold the picture board up, and while we're showing the pictures, I want you to tell everybody what was different about that project compared to anything that you have had done before. And to the best of my knowledge, it's probably still the only building in the area that's constructed that way. Tell me about it. Well, back then it was after the war, and rebar was hard to get. So they decided to go with post-tensioning, and there never had been a, a building built in south end post tensioning until we built the ibm so what were you tensioning what do you we we tensioning the concrete we put these cables in and they had to be a certain way and they were woven in and out hmm. and they had to be a certain way they were placed and and they even sent uh, a couple of us down to Cincinnati to see a St. job. St. Louis, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, St. Louis. They flew you down there. Yeah, to see a job in progress, to see how it's done. And Interesting. We, we, we learned a lot by just that trip. And uh, I'm going to show everybody some pictures here. Now, this building was called the IBM building in its day. It's now the home of the South Bend Community School Corporation yeah. Administration Building. So it doesn't look the same as in this picture as it did when Dad left it back in 1974 or 5. Yeah, it was more plain. Yeah. I'm also going to just kind of scan the, the picture board. You can see the cables that are running through there. Uh, what Dad is talking about, you know, yeah, there's one of the cables. Here's the building. Got a little connector going to another building there too, Dad, right? Yeah, that was a bridge across to the 15-story right building. Which in that day was called Society Bank, I think. St. Joe Bank. St. Joe Bank. That was before it was Society yeah. even. Now it's called Key Bank. Yeah. You can see some of the pictures during construction. That's how it looks today. Um, what do we got over here? This is hard because I can't see what I'm doing, folks. There's a a shot from when it was being done. Looks like it must have been close to the old J.C. Penney store. I see that on the side of yeah, a building there. there. Was. Yeah. Okay. Back of it. I think we'll go ahead and move on then. Um, well, the next one uh, I have no pictures of, but I know you spent some time down at Dalton Foundry in Warsaw. Yeah, buddy. About a year and a half. Oh, I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah. No pictures of that. That was kind of a dirty place to work up yeah, that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, dusty. 
I know uh, for in between jobs, you worked with your tools again for a short while out at what is now the Macy's department store at University Park Mall. Yeah. Uh, what was it back then? It was Macy's. Was it? No, I don't sound right. <clears throat> I don't think it was either. But anyway, good sized building. And then uh, the next project that you ran was at St. Mary's uh, College again in South Bend. And uh, they call it today St. Mary's Athletic and Wellness Complex. Now, I don't know what it was called back in that day. I don't think it was called that. But anyway, we got some pictures about that. And it's a very nice facility as well. I don't have many pictures of it. Dad didn't have any that were... Uh, original old pictures, but I downloaded a few online. It's basically an indoor gym, it looks like, right, Dad? Yeah. Here's the front of the building. It had a track all the way around it. Up above the gym? Yeah. I think I got a picture that kind of shows that. No, I don't. thought I did. Maybe that's the one. But anyway, that was a, a nice project as well. Wish I had more pictures of it to share, but I don't. So, you ready to move on, or you got anything else? No, go ahead. Okay. Well, um, one of the next ones, uh, and I don't remember you doing that. It was 1978. That was the year I graduated. I probably had other things on my mind. But you did a fire station in South Bend, and we got to visit that one, and we took some snapshots because you didn't have any old pictures. Also took some videos that will be seen later. Um but I'll just share those with you. Uh, this shows the fact that it was Hickey Construction Company. That's still inside the fire station. That's a shot of it outside. Another shot of it. I think they need to get their paintbrush out. Some of the garage door panels don't match. <laughs> Here's Dad standing by the placard inside the building. Uh, they, it, they had a, one of them... They, they stayed upstairs, slept upstairs, the firemen, and they had one of them brass poles, and they slid down that pole when the fire whistle blowed. Or oh. When they got a call. You were serious, then. When we were there, see, I had to get my no, nose. I was serious. The nose in the picture there with Dad by a fire truck. Outside there, before I lay this down, there's a, an old tree that they've carved into a fireman. I don't know if you can make it out, but I got a picture of Dad standing by that. And uh, he said he wanted to slide down the pole, and the fireman wouldn't let him. And I thought he was joking, but apparently there really is a, a really brass is. pole in there. So I wish we would have got in there and taken a picture of that. So you ready to move on? Yeah. Um, next one I got listed, you did some work out at the Airport Industrial Park, Nimit Industrial. I don't have anything to share with on that. No, I don't either, but he was a nice guy to yeah. work for. That's good. I remember that. It was uh, one of them design-build <laughs> jobs. Uh, oh. Quickie, you know. Yeah, I'm... and that was still with Hickey, it says. Yes. So Now, um... The next one I have listed that I remember you doing was 1979, 1980. Mm -hmm. In those days, it was called Crow Chiswick. Yeah. And it's called Crow... Horvath. Hor Horwath, I think it is. Yeah. Horwath, yeah, today. And it's still standing. It's on Jefferson Street. Uh, I think they've added on to it since then. Uh, one of the few jobs that I got to work with Dad on for a few days, not very long, I was working for another contractor that was working on that same project. But Dad was the superintendent over that project. In fact, one of the last projects, actually, where you were what I called a superintendent. And the rest of your career from then on, you were more of what they called a construction manager. So I'm going to show a few pictures of the Crow Chiswick building. And um, even though they can't see you, you can go ahead and share anything you want, Dad. A little picture board of some of the building under construction and some of the building as we see it today, pictures we took today.
Well, I don't know who that guy is in front of it there. The thing I remember most about that was getting started at the beginning. It was where the uh, old fire station used to be in downtown South Bend. I don't remember that. And uh, Julius O'Neill kept hitting water mains and he'd <laughs> flood, flood the darn area and then we'd have to wait till it dried up before we could go on with the, the footings, I remember. And uh, it held held us up quite a bit, but we made it through finally. Got her built anyway. Yeah. Then they later went on to add on to it. Um, I should have had you pointed that out, but yeah. still standing, still looks like new. Um, actually, when we videoed, which you'll see in the next segment, we parked in the parking lot of Century Center in South Bend, and I found it really cool that standing in the same spot without taking a step, we could film the IBM building to the west of us, we could film the Crow Chiswick building to the east of us, and we could film the Marriott's Hotel to the north of us without taking a step. <laughs> so that was one of the things I pointed out in the video. If you don't have anything more to add about Crow Chiswick, let's move on to the Marriott's Hotel at okay. the risk of running out of battery here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, to me, I got to spend quite a bit of time on the Marriott's Hotel working for a variety of contractors. I was a going through the carpenter's apprenticeship, but I was working as a laborer because work was really pretty short back in those days. And um, they, nobody was asking for carpenters, so I worked as a laborer on this project. And one of the longest projects that I ever got to work with you on so here's some pictures of the Marriott's Hotel. Quite an accomplishment. This is one of the first, probably the first job that Dad did acting as a construction manager as opposed to a construction superintendent. Can you explain what the difference is, Dad, and how you feel about it? Well, you just, you just had to coordinate the different contractors that was on the job, which some jobs had uh, many, many, many con different contractors, and you had to coordinate the time when you when you wanted them to move in and to uh, do their work. To do their work, yeah. yes. This is a oh my ten story hotel. You can see it under construction there. That's the finished product right there in the center. Big project. Yeah, the thing, the thing that I remember most about that was we had a storm come up one day, and uh, I remember running through the building, and I think I was on the fourth or fifth floor, I don't remember which, but anyway, there was block layers up there working, and we were building uh, support, well, support walls, a uh, four-inch block, and... Uh, they didn't get down enough, and I think one of them got completely covered up, one guy, but they got him out real quick and got him out of there. But I remember uh, yelling at him to get the heck down. You know. I think I, I think I was, no, I was working out at Notre Dame, but I remember that day. Yeah. Is that the day the sky turned yeah. dark, dark green? Yes, it was. Yep. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah. On that job, you had tower cranes, which were cranes that were not portable, that were built on foundations. And uh, golly sakes, I'd venture to say they were, what, 160 feet high at least? Yeah, they were different elevations. Yeah. So they would swing under or over each other. And when the operator went up into those, he was there for the day. He ate his lunch up there and everything because it took... A good 15 minutes, I remember, to climb up there. Yeah, I did, made it up there a couple of times. But did you? Yeah. Not me. <laughs> well, I was on the ground using the radio talking to him. Well, we had a we had a guy that they was having trouble uh, with, and I went up to see what the problem was. Show him how to do it? Did you run the crane a while? Well, no. But <laughs> once you get up there and see what his problem is, it's the deflection of the, the boom. It would it would keep bouncing, oh. and uh, that was their problem. He had to he had to allow for that when he brought the bucket down for concrete. 
So the, the tower cranes went straight up on a tower, and they um, they a turret would turn. Yeah. And then the boom that stuck out was, oh golly, hundreds of feet long too, probably. Yeah. And that's why you got the bounce. Yep. Interesting. Yep. The thing I remember most about that job was when we had uh, uh, the one of the tower cranes uh, had a, a turntable, which was probably six, eight foot in diameter, a big round turntable, and it cracked and it was unsafe to use, but we had to take the crane down and I wouldn't do it without getting another crane in there to hold it because I had iron workers out there on it on each end. They had to take so much weight off of one end and so much boom off of the other end, back and forth, back and forth. My. And, and uh, I knew these I knew these guys real well, and I I thought a lot of them, and I didn't want anybody to get hurt. Nope. And that's one thing you can be proud of. Um, I don't recall. I think later I'm gonna ask you a question about that. But Dad never had many guys get hurt on a job, did you? Safety always no, came no. first. Yep. <laughs> you wanna take a break? No, go ahead. All right. Um, Anything else about Marriott before we move on? <laughs> you know, probably, probably plenty, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we know where it is and what yeah. you did there. He was a construction manager on it. Yeah. Now, Dad, on the next project, you were fortunate enough to work pretty much within driving distance of your home throughout your career for the most part. Yeah. Um, when I was growing up, you know, you were home every night. And you didn't have to do a lot of traveling, which a lot of con or construction workers do. But you didn't. But things changed back in, oh, what year was this? 83. About 1983. Um, your kids were all raised and had moved out of the house and had been married or are, were married. And an opportunity came along while you were still with Solid Construction to be a construction manager that was out of town. Where was that at? Down at down. Close to Cincinnati, but it was called Fairfield, Indiana, uh, Illinois. Excuse me, Ohio, Ohio. One of those midwestern states. Yeah. It was Fairfield, Ohio, near Cincinnati. Yeah, and and I made it home every weekend. Yep, I remember. <laughs> Quite a drive too. Actually, that was called Woodridge Retirement Home or Nursing Home. I think the name <laughs> has been changed uh, a little bit. Um, Golly, you didn't get to come home every night. What'd you do? Did you sleep in your truck? No, I slept in a <laughs> motel, but I talked mom into coming down every other week and we got an apartment. <coughs> Dad's a little under the weather today. I made him do this anyway. Because I, I uh <laughs> I got tired of eating out in restaurants and she she would cook meals for me and, and, <coughs> and she'd cook some ahead quite a bit. For the next week when she wouldn't come. <coughs> but then our grand our grand grandkids were uh, small at that time. <coughs> Dad's a little under the weather today. Yeah, so. we, we took turns taking them down there with us. Yeah. And they got a kick out of that, I'm pretty sure, because mom got a chance to take them to Oh, what, what was that? I forgot what you took them to. A place where they could swim and stuff. Oh, like a... a Disneyland, wasn't it? Or not, <laughs> not Disneyland, it was something, something like Disneyland. It was... It was uh, I see a truck there by your trailer. Was that your, was that your uh, truck? Tell me about that. That's a red truck. You know, that was a truck that solid... Uh, Provided after I had mine stolen. Uh oh. We we got up one morning. To, I think it was the morning we got up to come home that day. It was on a Friday, and uh, my truck was gone. So you were in your apartment. You were which, in the apartment. We didn't elaborate, but they had a full blown apartment that they stayed in during the week down there, and of course the trucks, his truck, stayed out in the parking lot, and somebody helped themselves to it one night. Yeah. Huh? Tools and all. Tools and all. Yep. I remember that. 
Yeah. Anything else? Uh, later, I got a couple of questions I'm going to ask you about this project, but um, that pretty well covers it. It was a very large building. Um, anything else you want to say about that? Well, it was real similar to the building here in South Bend. What's the name of that one? Uh, Topsfield? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Topsfield. it's called St. Paul's today. Oh, yeah, St. Paul's. Yeah, yeah, leaning a little bit here. It was pretty, pretty similar to that. But yeah. Not identical. Big retirement. Yeah, home. big retirement. Yeah. Same company. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, they built one in South Bend, one in Indianapolis, and one in Fairfield. Fairfield. And I wasn't lucky enough to get the one in Indianapolis. <laughs> Dick Nelson run that one. Was it Fairf Fairfield? Is that right? Yeah, Fairfield. Okay. All right. Well, moving on. Um, from about 1985 then, clear through your till your retirement in 1992, you pretty much dedicated yourself to Penn Harris Madison School Corporation projects. Yeah. And the first one that I have listed here is what? Madison. Madison. You remember it, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got to visit that when we were doing some videos earlier. And I've got a few snapshots. Unfortunately, we couldn't get into any of the school buildings because they're on spring break. Yeah. So I'm going to show you a few pictures of it. hope it's the right board, is it? Yep. You'll see uh, Dad standing by the sign out by the road, which I assume was part of the project. I know Playground was part of the project. These are finished finished pictures. That's the gymnasium. In a minute, Dad, you'll have to tell them I know you saved part of it. That's a corridor looking down it. Well, we saved the gym. And, and we saved a part of a room back. That's aerial. In the, in the very back, it was part of the kitchen. It was because of uh, a government grant. And they had to Say it was a remodel job or something. I don't know just how they, some way they got some money that way. I don't know. Uh, politicians. <laughs> I think you pretty well described it. Um, it was a government grant, and rather than building new construction, you got money for restoring or yeah. saving part of the old. This this picture right down here, you're pointing at something. It's a little thing. It talks about somebody you know. This picture, Cyril Cole. Oh yeah, Cyril Cole. He was a principal. And I think, I think that was the only school that he was on in. He retired from there. He's retired now and lives in uh, <laughs> lives in uh, uh, top. I can't. Tell. Well, the building you just talked about, St. Paul's. Yeah, St. Paul's. Yeah. Which is a, a sister building to the one in Cincinnati. But yeah. Ciro's retired now, and um, he lives, he lives there. there. Yeah, yeah, he lives in one of the house houses that they yeah. built. But anyway, was he a pretty tough guy he, to work with? No, he wasn't. He was a pretty, <laughs> pretty gentle guy to work for. In fact, he wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. At the last few things, I did things for him that I probably wouldn't have done for other uh, principals. Uh, owners or whatever you want to call them, yeah, principal. Clients, I guess, but yeah, that, I, that was his position, right? He was the principal of the yes. school? Yeah, he was the principal. And I worked with him, helping him get some things done that he wanted done. And uh, Saul was paying me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you got to work with a lot of good people like that. Yeah. When, it, when Elm Road was done, you did another small project well, then then when I, <laughs> when I went when I went to Elm Road uh, oh did we skip one we did no you didn't no. I was going on to the high school but you're right Elm Road school is the next one that that's when uh, Pickies went out of business and Ermshire which was out of Fort Wayne uh, took over the job and actually, I was working for Emshire out of Fort Wayne, which I never saw anybody. <laughs> uh, so Emshire so was a construction management firm that yeah. you worked for. They just wrote my check. <laughs> but they, uh, 
They're out of business now, too. Oh, are they? Yeah. I think I found that on the internet. Don't have many pictures of this. Looks like uh, some serious demo work took place there before you built the new building, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm ruined. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we took down everything there but the kitchen. <laughs> Saved uh, everything but the kitchen sink, yeah, huh? Yeah, it was because of some Oops, money sorry. grants. Here, here's some some demo work the the viewers yeah. already got to see it but yeah uh, looks like you did some pretty extensive demo yeah 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 yep another good sized project but the biggest one i think you ever did is yet to come what was the next one you went to right here the high school penn high school um i think in the video I, or somewhere along the line i noted that that was a construction management job, and it was over $40 million. And for that day, that was probably the biggest project that ever had taken place in St. Joe County, I'm guessing. Maybe not. Yeah. But it was a biggie. <laughs> and, Dad, um, there was a lot of responsibility there. I don't think you had it all on your shoulders. You had some help, right? Well, I had some help with uh, another superintendent, but... He ended up getting fired. So. <laughs> uh oh, let's don't elaborate on that. We don't know who's going to see this. So, <laughs> but anyway, you did share some responsibilities with others, and I know you had a some project a project manager. Was it Paula on that job? Remember Paula? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and um, but still a lot of responsibility, and I think years laid with with uh, more of what went on out in the field, which is where yeah. the money's made. So a lot of responsibility. Now I've got some pictures. Uh, I think it's the last board here. Again, surprisingly, for as big as the project was, you didn't have any pictures to speak of. But as you can see here, this place sprawls, oh, I don't know how many acres the building itself would be. Now this is an aerial view of it. Dan, I don't know if you can see over the top of it or what, but. And it's been added on to this shot here probably shows some additions that yeah. dad didn't do. But it still gives you an idea of the magnitude of this building. And it wasn't a cheap tin can building either. It was all masonry. brick and mortar masonry building. Here's a road as if you were driving down the road view. It's all stone and brick. You know, very nice facility was the football field part of the project too at that no. time no no the gym was though and the gym's multi-level even yeah. is that true yeah yeah i'm gonna lay this board down so they can see you again that was one of the larger projects you ever did um is there anything you'd like to share about it you know i worked with tom hartman and he was he was from uh, Wakarusa. Yeah, Wakarusa. East. He was it Easter Day? Yeah, I don't sound right. Um, Eric Brown. Eric Brown. That was a contractor. Yeah, he he worked for Eric Brown, and he knew he knew a lot about construction management because he knew uh, he just knew a lot of the answers, yep. and uh, he was. He was a good guy to get along with, one of the nicest guys. That so he had been in your shoes before. Yeah. So one, of the, one of the guys I'd ever, one of the nicest guys I had ever worked with. And uh, I got to get up and see him again. <laughs> well, I hope that we can do that sometime. Yeah. Yeah, Alan keeps saying that we will, but he never. Oh, you're going to shame him into it now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I can go along too someday. Yeah. Well, there's no way you can begin to describe what all happened there. It was a large, large, large project. You were there for at least two and a half years, I'll bet. Yeah, I suppose. And um, lots of contractors. It was construction management, again, where Ermshire, the firm that Dad worked for, managed the project. But there was probably 60 different bid packages and 60 different contractors that... Um, had different 
types of work that they did on that job. And I think we covered some of that in the, the video we yeah, did earlier. Yeah, some of them were just small guys like uh, tack boards or blackboards and, you know, yeah. stuff like that. But there was one contractor that may have done the concrete work, another one that did the masonry, somebody else did the metal studs. You know, that's how you ended up with 60 different bid packages. Yep. 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 Well, you got a few more Penn Harris Madison uh, projects here, and they were what you called smaller projects to end up your career. However, by most men's uh, standards, they were large projects. And I know you worked at Schmucker Middle School right across the road from Penn High School. Yeah. And you worked at Walt Disney Elementary School. And actually, I, uh, Caser Spraker Construction, the, the company I, that Patty and I worked for, we had a portion of that. We worked at Walt Disney under your supervision, but you weren't too tough on me, I remember. <laughs> and you also did some work out at Grissom Middle School, and, and I've worked at all these schools too. We used to do some capital improvement projects. And then uh, the last couple of years, I think you just did some minor miscellaneous work for the, uh, the corporation as well. Is there anything else that you'd like to add to this very lengthy list? And we didn't run out of battery yet. What do you think of that? Well, even after retirement, uh, Ron Gawker and I went up and built a, uh, what do they call it, storage, storage? Oh, yeah. Building. I think I helped with that. Uh, I think you did, too. Alan, we hung some drywall and Alan things. Alan did, I think, yeah. too, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. It was right near the football field, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 I remember that. We built our house. Yep, we covered that in the video pretty well. Um, I've got a list, and I kind of went over that in a previous video that I did, an introduction. Um, actually, I've got some pictures of those. What else did we forget? I think a list of questions I wanted to go over with you, Dad. Let's go to yours. I think you get, you've got it right here. Mom mentioned that they built a house, and um, golly, I did cover this in an earlier video, and Dad bought their first home and fixed it up. Built Him and Mom built the home that we're setting in right now. Really yeah, yeah, we covered that in a video, too. Um, that was about the time Mom was carrying me, and I, she said I helped shingle the roof, but I think that was her up there doing the nailing. But anyway, uh, many, many projects other than the commercial ones that we just went over in this segment of the film. And um, I do have a couple questions I want to go over with you, Dad, if I could. Um, after all this video work and, and talking to you around the table here, you got a lot of projects to be proud of. I'm going to ask you, what was the most rewarding project of your career and why? Or if you can't single one out, just tell me. Well, I don't know. A couple of them. <coughs> Most of them were rewarding when you when you really completed them and and mostly made them happy. But uh, so it was kind of neat helping other people's dreams come true is what you're yeah. saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, any particular client that you got a lot of sac satisfaction? You already mentioned Tom Hartman in that, but yeah, he was. I respected him yeah. highly. And uh, well, somehow along the line, you got a few gray hairs, and I'm hoping mine doesn't turn gray. <laughs> but if it does, I did the same thing for many years too that Dad has done. But what was probably the most stressful stressful project that you had ever tackled? Uh, Marriott was probably the, was one of the most stressful because we had a. Did I mention about the tower crane cracking? Yep, you did mention yeah, that a little okay. earlier. So that yeah, I mentioned that, that was pretty stressful. At, I didn't sleep that night because I worried about getting that crane down. Yep, and having to put guys out there. Yep. Well, that was a thirty-some million dollar project, which I, I don't know what that would be in today's money. But probably, probably three times that. Probably. Large project. A lot yeah. of stress. 
And I think you may have already answered this one. Uh, I was going to ask you what was the worst weather-related incident on a project that you can remember, but I think you pretty well covered that the yeah. day the sky turned green at the Marriott, huh? Yeah, that, that was yeah. one of the stressful ones. I had to run through the building to get guys out down out of there because it was coming. It was, it uh, it didn't it must have lifted up or something when it got to the Marriott because it didn't it done some damage but it was just from wind yep and uh, didn't didn't knock everything down it just knocked some 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 green green walls down that weren't set up yet but they were still laying the mortar on so by green walls, it, they weren't painted yet. He's, he, green means that the, the mortar was still wet and they hadn't yeah. set up yet. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that had to be pretty pretty scary that day. Yeah, it was. On a personal note, what was the closest call that you ever encountered as far as a personal injury yourself? I thought we discussed that, didn't we? Uh, it was, Not on film. It, I think we did. Okay, it was it was out at St. Mary's at Powerhouse, and I had some old scaffold that should have been junked, <laughs> that was been repaired or been welded, and one of the welds broke loose, and I was standing out in midair, was hanging on to the uh, bar, which so one. One of the bars on the scaffolding broke, but luckily you were able to hang on to another yeah. one. Yeah. Did you rush right home and tell Mom about that? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I <either>. bet you didn't. <laughs> She's over here acknowledging that, that it happened, uh, but I think she just heard about it. So I, I can remember right where it was. and Yeah. I remember the scaffold, and, yep. and uh, it got dumped right away. Yeah. Dad, I think we already answered this question. I had asked of all the people you worked with, what person comes to mind when you think about a good working relationship? But I think you've already covered that with Tom Hartman, yeah, Tom Hartman and Cyril, Cyril, Cole. Cyril Cole. So we won't dwell on that. Uh, here's one that we haven't covered uh, that I think some of the younger people might enjoy hearing. Uh, what were hourly wages like when you began your career in construction? When you were a home builder with Morton, do you remember what you were making an hour? Yeah, two seventy five. Two dollars. Two dollars and seventy five cents. Wow. <laughs> and then when I went union, it jumped up to three ten. Huh. But then every year it jumped up more each year seemed like. Yeah. Well, pretty humble beginnings, but then again. Three dollars would buy a little more than it does today, too. I imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You always had blue trucks, at least the ones you owned yourself. Um, '69, I think you got a new one, didn't you? I know you drove a '69. What what might that truck have cost? Do you remember? Sixteen hundred and yeah. some dollars. I think that's what I've heard you say in the past before. Yeah. So, so the dollar did go a little bit farther, but it was still oh, yeah. still a pretty low hourly wage, wasn't it? Yeah, but, but then I then I bought a another blue one when I was down at Warsaw. Seventy three. And yeah, seventy three. Two tough. I forget two what I paid for that. I think it was it was something like six thousand, maybe six thousand. And when I come home, I remember Mom asked me, what do you think you are, the president of the company? Uh-oh. Now, listen, let's don't get into an argument on the video here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a lot, of, a lot of different blue trucks through the years. Um, next question, and I think we're getting low on battery here. Obviously, this many years, you've seen some changes regarding construction work and procedures and how things are done. Have tools changed through the years? Definitely tools have changed, yes. We didn't have uh, uh, screw guns like we got now and, and concrete uh, drills that would drill uh, practically any size hole you wanted in concrete. Used to have to do it with a star bit, star huh? bit yeah. and a hammer. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as that goes, um, 
you always hear about a carpenter and his hammer and saw. I doubt that they use hammers as much as they did back when you started, do they? Everything's yeah, everything's power. Everything's pneumatic or yeah. or uh, power down. actuated of some kind. Yeah, yeah. And even saws. Um, I always remember you were always protective of your handsaw. Yeah. I rarely see a handsaw on the job anymore. They got little portable, yeah. battery operated saws now, and most carpenters probably don't even have one in their toolbox. So, so tools have changed. Anything else about tools? No, I can't yeah. think of anything right off hand other than. Uh, like cell phones and and, uh, and uh, computers and uh, answering machines and all that is you didn't have all that when you started no <laughs> <laughs> well cell phones sometimes can be a pain in the neck to have strapped to your side but yeah. even even when you were down in Cincinnati did you have a cell phone yeah you did yeah I had a cell phone Oh, I thought that was the job where they could never get a hold of you, and they were, you thought you were going to get fired for it. Well, I never answered it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. But anyway, when you first started out, they didn't have things like cell phones and faxes and email and computers. <coughs> so, well, I suppose some of these changes have affected things like schedules, too. Do they get as much time to build a building nowadays that as they did when you first started? You know, all they want is quantity instead of quality. They want... I think they want both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's changed a lot. In the Sounds like 25 it. 25 years since I've been... Whether 20-some, I don't know, 25 or 26. Oh, a little bit more than that. Oh, wait, since you retired, you mean? Yeah. Well, 26. Yep. One couple more questions, and then we're going to sign off for a while. Um, earthwork procedures, when you were in Ohio, were they different than they are in Indiana? It definitely. It was, in Ohio, there was all rock, and I wasn't used to that, and I, I couldn't. I, I got awful itchy because I was three months before I could do anything, and then I couldn't even form the footings. I had to just use the rock as forms and, and set some grade stakes. stakes. Mm -hmm. And if it took an extra yard or two, it took an extra, <laughs> extra yard or two, but I know it took more than what they had figured on. Yeah, of course it costs money to form up footings too, but... yeah. But around here in Indiana, we have sand and gravel, and you can dig in it easy. Uh, what Dad is saying is, of course, they knocked off about a 25-foot high mound of dirt down there, too, to build this. Is rock. that true? Mostly rock. Yeah. And I, know, I remember going down there to visit. There was enormous equipment. They even had bulldozers that were connected together hydraulically so one operator could run two machines at the same time. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And all of this equipment was so large, you could actually stand inside of the rims, I remember, on the earth movers and that. So three months of large equipment like that to knock a hill down just so you can build a building was a little different around here, huh? It sure was. Yeah. All right. I got one last question for you. Um, you didn't last long at Studebaker's. <laughs> Are you glad you left the factory and pursued a, a career in construction? Yeah, definitely. It was, it was something different every, practically every day. And that's what I liked about it. it you never knew what you was going to be doing tomorrow yep. sometimes. Well, I think it was been pretty good to, to you, and you've been pretty good to it. And that's about all I'm prepared to talk to you about right now. If you don't have anything else you want to add... No, I probably forgot a lot. But. <laughs> well... It's hard to cover it all in a video, too. Yeah. But Well, the next portion of the video that we're going to be doing is uh, a segment that I called On the Road. And it's where Dad and I, actually, it's already been filmed. We're doing it out of sequence here. But uh, where we're going to go around and visit a few of his past projects, certainly not all of them. But I'm uh, looking forward to sharing that with you 
And I guess we'll see you then. Tell them goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>It's April 2nd, 2018. It's a cold spring morning. Only had 14 degrees this morning. But the sun's shining and the wind is calm, so Dad and I and Mom are gonna take some on-the-road videos of some of Dad's projects that are uh, that he accomplished. And we probably won't go into a lot of detail about what took place. We'll take care of that in our round the table discussion. First place we find ourselves is at 2,805, well, no, wait, 28590 New Road. This is the location of mom and dad's first home. First of all, I want to scan over here. I think this is one of the very first projects he ever did. The sun's kind of interfering, but uh, that's a garage that they built on, or they actually built. And then we come over here to what is mom and dad's first home. They moved into this the very first day of their married life on January 1st, 1950. Pictured here are mom and dad and their longtime neighbors, Jack and Mary Lou Vukovitz. The Vukovitzes have actually been here for 50 years themselves this year. They moved in in 1968. Now when the, uh, my folks first moved into this house, it wasn't quite this large. You'll see where it bumps out there on the right side of the picture. They added on those two bedrooms. And they also added on uh, a bathroom as well. Even though it did have a nice bathroom, didn't it, Mom and Dad? Oh, great. Really great. Tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, it was... Uh, nice and loud. A two-holer. A two-holer. <laughs> out in the backyard, huh? Yeah, and a, and a, <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that you appreciated having that, and I think Jack and Mary Lou probably do as well, <laughs> as long as they've been here. Now, Jack and Mary Lou, you've lived here since 1968, so this is your 50th year here yourself. <laughs> Mom and Dad actually moved in in 1950, January 1st, their first day of marriage. And they were here until 1959, probably, when they built their new home, which is our next stop. It's right down the street here. You can see it down there. So 1958, so let's see, you, you had all three of your first children here, Mom and Dad, right? Yes. Yep, and then I came along, and uh, they were living in their new home at that time. Jack and Mary Lou raised four kids here themselves, Dan, and Mary, and Kathy, and Victor. So I think that's all we need to cover. Do any of you have anything you want to say? I know nothing. You know nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Primarily, you just kind of fixed this house up as your first home and did some painting and, of course, added on, like I mentioned. So... Well, if you don't have anything you want to add, we'll just consider that a, a take. <laughs> well, here we are on our second stop of our little on-the-road tour. This is uh, one of Dad's first projects as well. First home project, anyway. Complete home that he built for himself, anyway. I mentioned earlier, this was finished in 1959. They moved their three kids down the down the road a couple doors. Nice shed that he put up later. Back in the back. At the time they moved here, there were many more trees. We'll ask Dad about that in a minute. Let me come up a little bit closer and we'll talk to Mom and Dad just a little bit. Well, Mom and Dad, this is your really your one and only house that you built for yourself, correct? That's correct. Yep. I already mentioned that there was a lot of trees here when you first moved. There's still a lot of trees when it comes fall time, but there was actually more. So you cut down a lot of them, Dad? Yeah, I cut down, or had a lot of them cut down. 
I paid more to have them cut down than I paid for the acre of ground. <laughs> you paid more to have trees removed than you actually paid for the ground, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Do you remember what you paid for this lot? Five, five, five hundred. $500 for a one acre lot. <laughs> but it was pretty low when you moved in, was it not? Oh yeah. Well, how, okay, how's that? Mom, mom hauled dirt, you said? Yeah, I bought an old dump truck and she all dirt uh, one whole summer, didn't you? Yep. My goodness. And that was probably why she was carrying me before I was born. Is that true? That's true. <laughs> well, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was supposed to be talking. Yeah, I hauled a lot of dirt when we first started to move here. Where, where did you get the dirt? Around on 23 over there to that gravel pit. gravel pit. Bill Kapansky's gravel pit? Yeah. Uh huh. 10 cents a yard. 10 yeah. cents a yard for yeah. fill dirt, yeah. huh? <laughs> and that's what created all of these mounds out here, yeah. then, right? Yeah. You filled in around the house, then. Okay. What else did you do, uh, Mom, on the, uh, the house? Oh, I did a lot of things. I would put up the uh, boards while he was at work and then. I helped with the roofing and... You actually shingled or nailed shingles on the roof while you were pregnant, huh? I did. <laughs> Dad, I know you did a lot, a lot of work here. Um, pretty much all of it except for what? Well, I had the plumbing and the heating and uh, elect electrical work. So you had contractors do the plumbing and the heating and the electrical. Okay. All right. One thing I've always noticed about this house that's different than most was the gable ends. What do you call those? It was flare, flared out. Flared out? I think I've heard you call them flying gables. Is that true? Yeah, I guess. A <laughs> little bit different than what most people's are. They're actually, they grow as the gets closer to the peak of the roof. I got tired of building hip roofs. <laughs> oh, when you were a home builder, you got tired of building hip roofs, so yeah. this was more of a traditional roof with a ridge, but it had the flying gables. Yeah. So, is there anything else you'd like to say about this project? No, I've always been happy with this project and happy with all the kids that have been here. Oh, that's great. We still come here. In fact, we were here just yesterday for Easter, and uh, the whole family didn't get to come this time, but. It's grown from the two of you to up over 40 people now <laughs> that show up for dinners and so forth. So, well, I I guess you must have been happy with the project because you've been here almost 60 years now. So, <laughs> yeah. well, if you don't have anything else to say, we'll leave it at that, okay? Yeah, that's okay. We appreciate that. Well, here we are on another stop on our On the Road Tour with another one of dad's projects that he built probably in 1968, somewhere along in there. This is the pedestrian bridge that spans over Chapin Street in South Bend, Indiana. Dad's in the foreground here. You can see the bridge in the background. It's pretty cool. The, uh, the ramps are all spiral and they turn go up and over, and come back down. The traffic you see underneath is uh, heading north and south on Chapin Street. Let's come in and talk to Dad a minute. Hope oh, the sun's kind of getting in us here now, Dad, but this is Chapin Street Bridge, Dad, and this is, uh, who did you work for on this project? Do you remember? Hickey Construction. Yeah. Is this probably one of the earliest projects that you ever did for yeah, them? I think it was. By myself. Yeah. yeah. Who was your general superintendent that was over you on this project? Rocky Miscavige. But he was pretty much in the office and you were probably uh, had the responsibility out in the field by yourself. Is that yeah, true? I, I asked for help when I got to top of it and he said you figure it out yourself. <laughs> he told you to figure it out all by yourself, huh? Yeah. 
Well, it's certainly a neat project and uh, one that I remember from when I was just a kid. Gosh, I would have only been about eight years old. So I know there's some other stories about this that we'll get in more detail uh, when we talk about it when we're sitting down at the table at home. Anything else you want to say? No, I don't think so at this time. Okay. Okay, here's Dad at the base of the Chapin Street Bridge. Who put that fence up for you, Dad? Do you remember? Yeah, they were Shules. Shule Fence Company out of uh, South yeah. Bend here. Yeah. Here's what holds everything up, the base of the bridge. A little bit of concrete there. It doesn't look like much to hold that columns or how far, the ground, though. <laughs> how far does it go down? I don't remember, but it's pretty deep. Pretty deep, huh? Yeah. Underneath side. Well, here we are on Western Avenue in South Bend, Indiana. This is one of Dad's smaller projects that he did about 1978. It's fire station number six, obviously. <laughs> Took some snapshots of him as well in front of a pretty cool totem pole they got right there. So. He doesn't remember a whole lot about this project. That must mean that, that it went real well. And we did inform the firemen inside that the warranty expired today. So <laughs> that's it. Okay, we find ourselves on the road again here. We're in South Bend, Indiana on what is now called Martin Luther King Drive, 215 Martin Luther King Drive. Dad is here standing in front of the what was called the IBM building when he built it and I'll let him tell you what year that was um, it's no longer the IBM building as you can see they have done a facelift on the outside it's now part of the South Bend Community School Corporation uh, administration building I must admit it's a beautiful building they've done a nice job uh, doing a facelift on it. it stands right next to the Key Bank building and just down the street from the Marriott's Hotel, what we call the Marriott's Hotel. It's now uh, actually Doubletree by Hilton. So I'm going to come up here and ask Dad just a couple of questions about this building. Dad, I already told everybody what this building was, but do you recall what year it was built, what year you worked on this? Yeah, 1974, 1975. And you were the superintendent on this project, correct? Yeah. Okay. This project was a little bit different than most uh, conventional projects of the day. Can you tell me what that, what the difference was? We'll try that again. We had a motorcycle going by. Okay. They were all wrapped and greased in uh, cardboard tubes. So the cables were inside the concrete yeah. in, instead of uh, rebar. Why didn't they use rebar? Because rebar was scarce at that time. Huh. So we started to do this, but I think it was the first one in South Bend, maybe the only one. So at the time, at least, maybe even to this day, it was the only post-tension concrete work in the area huh and uh, how did you know how to do it did you have to you had no other projects they, they flew me out to st louis to you went to st louis to see how it was done okay and there was a, a building similar to this under construction then. okay did you fly through the arch while you were there no we didn't they didn't let you do that oh that would have been fun if i remember right I think that might have been another time because I was with you. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, this post-tension concrete, we'll talk more about it in detail when we're at home around the table. But basically that means they tightened the cables up after the concrete was cured. Is that Correct. true? That's they had interesting. To wait at least three days. 
Three days. Yeah. And then what held the ca the cable at each end? They had uh, round, uh, like a socket. It would, had uh, draw, two, two sets of jaws on it that, and they jacked against it with hydraulic jacks. Okay. That shoved these wedges in there and that tightened it up on the cables on each end. The one end had a dead end that they called it and the other end had the, the uh, adjustable end. So they would hydraulically tighten the cables Hydraulic. up if you will and then when they released it the these cylinders or like cams at each end would wedge into a tapered socket is that what you're saying? Okay. Do you have any of those left by chance laying around I home? I got one at home somewhere. Yeah, if we can think of where it's at, maybe that'd be interesting to show yeah. when we talk about it around the table. Yeah. Well, it's a very interesting project and again, a very nice project. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, not really. It brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Dad. But if you turn around, you can see your Coach Lizzie Jeff. Oh, good point. That was going to be one of our next stops. Dad just pointed out that if you turn around, here's the Marriott's. We're in their parking, or excuse me, Century Center in South Bend. We're in their parking lot. And if you turn around, here too is another project of Dad's that I didn't even realize we'd be able to see it from here. But I didn't do any of that glass part. Okay, the Crow Chiswick building, it was called in the day, and now I believe it's called Crow Harwar, Harwath, Crow Harwath. And what do they do there, Dad? What kind of business is that? Accounting. It's an accounting, so there's a lot of people there. Now this project was 1979, and it actually was not as big as what it is right now. Um, tell me about that, Dad. Go on out there and turn around if you want to. We're doing, killing two birds with one stone here. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not just South Bend, it's all over the country. They have branches. Uh, okay, so there it's an accounting firm that has branches all over. Yeah. And when you built the original part in 1979, which part was it? Was it on the right? All the brick part. All the brick part, but not the glass. Part, okay. part of the brick part is covered with that glass. Okay, I'm gonna move to the right just a little bit. He's saying that the portion that he helped construct, or actually was the superintendent of, is this part of the building, not the part that has all the glass. I'd say they covered up Turn around if you're going to talk. What's that? I'd say they covered up part of that brickwork with the glass. Okay. On the left, on the left side here, be on the north. Well, I didn't have a chance to look at my notes before we started this. I just was unaware that we could kill two birds with one stone and and talk about two projects while standing in the same spot. I guess that just shows that you uh, did a lot of projects in this town and. It's pretty neat that all you got to do is turn around and you see another one. And that, that Crow Chiswick uh, or Crow Harwath building, as it says on the building today. It was, it was called Crow Chiswick at the time. Yeah, Crow Chiswick. It's on Jefferson Street if any of you are looking for it. it would be just to the east of the Century Center. Anything else you want to say about that project, Dad? No, that was my last project. With Hickey Company. That okay. Dad just said that that was the last project that he did with the Hickey Company. And then you went on to work for who? Solid. What was your first project My there? First project there was uh, <laughs> Marriott's. Marriott. Yeah, it was called Marriott's at that time. And here I am now, just looking to the north, standing in the same spot and yet another project of Dad's, and that's our next stop. So we'll pick it up from there. Well, we're right down the street from our last location at the Marriott's Hotel. It's now called the Double Tree by Hilton. In the day back in 1980, it was the Marriott's though. 
see dad in the foreground there standing in front of the project that he was responsible for which was the hotel portion and the atrium portion the glass portion in between that and the what is now the first source bank and we'll take some more video once we get inside just to the uh, east of us we're standing on what was the Football Hall of Fame, College Football Hall of Fame. Here we are at the Marriott's Hotel. We're in the glass atrium area. Dad is in the foreground here. We'll come back to him in a little bit. I'm going to take some shots of the building. I don't know how many feet that is. The long ways up there. A lot of glass, a lot of steel. The hotel to our right, there's the elevator. Hotel to our right. And on the other side of the atrium, you'll find what is still First Source Bank and other offices that are located inside that building. Another set of elevators as well. Let's come back to Dad and ask him a few questions. Dad, you want to look this way? Does this bring back some memories for you? What? Does this bring back some memories yeah. for you? Quite a few. Yeah, I imagine it does. Take you back to what year did you do this project? 1980. 1980. So you would have been... See, so you were born in 30. Around 50 years old then, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And tell me this. On this project here, were you responsible for all three areas or what? Just the Marriott and the look, look up at the atrium. Marriott on the east side and the atrium in the middle. Okay, so you were responsible for the construction of the the hotel and then all this glass portion, the, the atrium area as well. Quite a project long ways up in the air too. Let me ask you this, how did you, uh, how did they elevate things? How did they get the steel up in the air and how did they get the drywall up and things like that? We had three tower cranes. Mm -hmm. We had three tower cranes. Three tower cranes. Yeah. One to the south probably? Yeah, one right here to the south, and one in the middle, and then one on the west. Yeah. West. Yeah. Okay. So you had three tower cranes running at the same time. Yep. That was probably the best part of my job when I helped you a little while. I remember I was the radio man for all three tower cranes and it was a cushy job I have to admit but um, anybody wanted to use the tower crane had to come to me and borrow a radio or have me give directions and signal the cranes. That was fun. When we get around the table at home, look up this way, would you? <laughs> Can't get him to look at the camera. When we're around the table at home, um, we'll have some other questions about this place because this this was about three years of your life here, and a lot of things happened, um, including a storm, if I remember right. So we'll we'll probably get in detail into that more when we get at home. Anything else you want to add? No, not really. Bring it back a lot of memories. <laughs> How many years ago would that have been? About 38 or so? 30. Close, to, Close 40. to 40. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we'll pick it up at home then. Thanks a lot. That clock used to sit out here on the corner and uh, they got it fixed and working and I think it's working. Quarter, yeah, quarter three. Looks like it. And they moved it in here then. Well, we're on the seventh floor right now in the elevator area, lobby, looking down at the atrium. Come back over to the other side here. 
Oh yeah, you can see the restaurant area from this side. Beautiful building. Lots of glass and lots of steel. Dad, I remember them saying that it was a 20 year building when they built it. Do you remember that? No, I don't. I do. <laughs> it was a short term investment, but it's been here much longer than that, almost 40. Half of the buildings held together with silicone caulk, I think. A lot of these <laughs> panels in that, I remember. Here we are down in the parking garage portion of the Marriott's Hotel, now called the Double Tree by Hilton. And Dad's standing beside a concrete column. Now you might notice that that particular column is square, as well as all of the columns in this area are square. However, when you turn around, you're gonna notice that the remainder of the building all the concrete columns are round and much smaller. Now there's a good reason for that and I'm going to let Dad tell you about it in just a minute here. See if he remembers a particular day when I think somebody came running out of the parking garage pretty excited. Do you remember that day, Dad? Yeah, faintly. <laughs> it's been a long time ago, almost 40 years ago. I don't remember who, I was working here with you at that time, and um, do you remember who came and reported the, the problem that was we were experiencing? No, I don't remember. I don't either, but I remember there was a lot of excitement that day, people very concerned about the fact that the building might start to fail. And it was of no fault of the engineers, no fault of yours, but tell me why it why the concrete column started to literally crack and crumble in this area. Do you remember? There was a, a, a large planter up above it and they were filled it with black dirt and it was wet and then when it rained it got wetter. And, and therefore heavier. Yeah, heavier. And the columns just couldn't stand the weight. And, <laughs> and, uh, we had to shore everything up that night, I remember. I remember we worked on overtime that night, even shoring up to, to keep things from collapsing. collapsing huh? and yeah, it was wood columns or wood shoring that you put in yeah. to help support the weight of the concrete above us. Yeah. And I remember I was an apprentice carpenter working as a laborer at the time, though. And I got to help with a lot of that. I, I never did quite understand for sure why Dad sent me down there if he was trying to get rid of me or what that day. <laughs> Not really. But anyway, it was quite a quite an ordeal. Fortunately, nobody was ever hurt, and the project was saved. And they came back in and poured these square columns around the failing round columns. Does that pretty well describe it, Dad? Pretty well. Okay. Get a good picture of that one over there. That the yeah, that's that was the worst one, one wasn't it? Yep, yeah, and the biggest too. That must be four or five feet long now, where it used to only be a what, maybe a twenty-inch round column. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we find ourselves at the main entrance of Penn High School. This is probably the largest project that Dad ever did. I think we decided it was in excess of $40 million. Um, this is just one small portion of the building, the main entrance. You can see that it goes quite a little ways down this way. It goes way, way, way down that way. And it spreads forever going away from us, too. Um, <laughs> I'm glad we came out. This is a pretty decent shot of the building. The only thing you can see online is just pictures from a bird's eye view because it covers acres and acres. So, very large project. I'm going to walk up towards Dad here. We'll see if he has any comments that he'd like to make about this one.
Dad, I'm going to take you back to 1988, I think we said, right? Yeah. Yeah, 1988. I think so. <laughs> this was the, the Penn Harris Madison School Corporation project. It was the high school. Penn High, everybody refers to it as. And this was probably the largest project that you were ever responsible for. Would you agree with that? Yeah, between that and the Marriott, maybe. Okay. Dollar-wise, it was a little bit more than the Marriott's, but then again, it was more recent too. So they're probably both one and the same, both very large projects. How many contractors would you guess you had on the job site at one time at, at the peak, peak times? Uh, I never had them all at one time. That's, it probably was 50 different packages. A lot of them are just small uh, packages, like uh, uh, equipment, lockers, and stuff lockers, like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's a good example. Lockers, which uh, they done in phases, and uh, uh, I can't think of any casework. Uh, maybe cabinets. Yeah, cabinets were yeah. another. Down to basketball uh, equipment. And, and, uh, so you didn't do this by yourself, huh? <laughs> no, no, there was three of us. That and probably, if you add them all up, probably as many as 500 men that probably worked on it at different times, I would yeah, venture to say. Probably would. Yeah. And a lot of these, there's always a, a hundred some, yeah. sometimes a hundred different guys working here yeah definitely a large project and one to be proud of um, I know you've made a lot of good friends on this project too uh, lifetime friends even who comes to mind when you think of Penn High uh, Tom Hartman comes to mind and he was one of the nicest guys that I ever worked with on the project yep I've had the the opportunity to work around him a couple of times myself and he's definitely a gentleman and a fair straight shooter isn't he yeah, yeah he yeah. sure is yeah about ready to retire and i gotta get up there and see him <laughs> well i hope we can do that soon so what else comes to mind about this i can't think of any other we can talk more about it when we get back to the house and sit around the table but anything else you want to share uh, not really, but it brings back a lot of memories, like the addition I built on Smucker. Okay, here we go again. Just like at the last stop we made, you can turn around and see more projects that he did. Across the road from Smucker. <laughs> middle school, I middle think. Middle school. Yeah. We built on uh, three, three large classrooms here on the south side of the building. Okay, this is a shot basically of the whole school. If you come down here on this this end, I'm going to try to zoom in on it. Dad's referring to this portion of the building. He added on to that. That's one of those, quote, small projects that he did, which uh, for many men would be a large project, but one of the small Penn Harris Madison projects that he did in the last few years of your career. Would you agree? I agree. Yeah. Okay, anything else you want to say? Well, I, before I even left Penn High and Schmucker right here, Dad pointed out the fact that in the background, try to zoom in on it here. I guess I can't. In the background, that big sprawling white building is another building that he had worked on. That's the AM General. Now, we can't get in there to work or to take videos because uh, they do a lot of government work there and they have security and so forth. But once again, you can't turn around without finding some kind of project that he's worked on. Filled in between two buildings, a thousand and twenty-five feet long. Yeah, basically he filled in a, a large section of roof between two facilities and it was a thousand and some feet long. We'll talk more about that around the table. Well, we're still on the road and we're out at Madison Elementary School. 
I think this is one of Dad's favorite projects of all time, not so much because of the building, but because of the people that he got to work with. The principal at that time was named Cyril Cole. Just a gentleman to work with. Here you see Dad standing in the main entrance. We'll come back to him in just a minute. While I'm standing here, I wanted to get a picture of the playground, which was part of the renovation that Dad was a superintendent for. Sorry about the camera shakes. <laughs> All right, Dad, you're tell them where you're standing. Uh, main entrance of Madison High School. Okay. One of the projects I did was Cyril Cole. He ended up, he ended up working right with him, helping put equipment together. <laughs> yep, he was a. Uh... He was a good helper for you, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I think actually this is considered an elementary school. They all go to Penn High School, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're at Madison Elementary. Do you remember what year we did you did this one? We got it written down in the car. I think it's 1985, somewhere along yeah, there. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about these uh, little cubby holes here. Well, these were just to keep the, this part here was added on in front of this, where the uh, downspouts are here. And the, okay. Yeah, and the openings were for the kids to jump out of the bus and get in the drive. Okay, so this driveway that I'm standing in right here, this is where the buses come in and unload, yes. and the kids can run underneath that, I assume, a canopy there. Yeah. So this is a new wall where the holes are at. What about that wall behind it? The wall back here was the original Madison School. So that's an older structure back there. And you added this addition on so they have a, a dry... We refaced over the... Because it's the same brick. Yeah, it looks new anyway. Yeah, we re, re, refaced it. And we cut off each end of the section. I see. I say new is 30 some years old, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, yet another nice project. Well, you can come in, come in here and look at this neat ceiling. And... Well, if you want to know the truth, I remember we did, I did this ceiling oh, yeah? years later. Yeah. Yep. I knew you had run this project, but I did this as a capital projects for Penn Harris Madison when I worked for Kaser Spraker. I remember all that soffit. Okay. I didn't actually do the work. I think I had 11 schools yeah, that... I, 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 I didn't remember doing this either, so... Yeah. All right. What else, anything else you want to say about this project? How about, how did they take care of this project after you got done? Well... Turn around here. I, I visited several times, and when I came in here and looked at it, it's just like as clean and nice as it was when I walked out. <laughs> so they took a lot of pride in this and they took care of it long after you left, right? They sure did. They had good custodians. And, uh, Who was one of the custodians that you knew? Uh, Charlene Bichtel was. Uh, Charlene Gawker? Yeah, it's Gawker now. It was <laughs> Charlene Bickle yep. at the time, yeah. Yeah, she took a lot of pride in taking care of this place. I know yeah. you always said that. So, what? Well, anything else you want to say about this? Well, uh, they used to kid me about her, Charlene, because I used to look at me here. I used to go in and, and eat dinner with her. <laughs> <laughs> She's a nice lady. Yeah, and she went to our church, so you knew her yeah. from two different for two different reasons. Yep. Okay, anything else you want to add? No. I... I don't think we can see inside. We're on spring break, so nope, can't see a thing. Still on the road, this time visiting Elm Road Elementary School. 
we'll let dad tell you what year he did this and kind of what he did come over here you can see pretty good size school this was a renovation project goes back a long ways Let's zoom in on dad here and come up and talk to him a bit. All right, dad, what year are you going to take us back to this time? 80, 85? 87, I think. 87? <laughs> yeah. 87. This was after I completed Okay. Remember who you were working for at that time? Uh, I started working for Hermshire here. Yeah, I think this was the first one, wasn't it? Yes. Solid went out of business. Hermshire took over. Uh, Solid already had the contract to do this one. Hermshire took over Solid's contract. Okay, so this is the first one you had to do with Hermshire then? Or got to do, I should say. All right. Was this a brand new building, or was it a renovation? It was. I tore down, tore down the old building, but for some reason I had to leave a couple of walls standing back, turned back by the kitchen because of uh, government funds or something. I don't know. Oh, probably a government grant of some yeah, kind. Yeah, some kind of a grant. For and you had to leave a few walls just so it would be called a renovation. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Instead of a, uh, a new building. Right. All right. What else do you remember about this one? Anything in particular or just go pretty smooth? No, yeah, it went pretty smooth. Okay. I'm going to zoom in on your hat here. <laughs> All right, well, if you don't have anything else, we'll go ahead and shut the camera off, all right? Well, we've covered a lot of ground. In closing, I hope that you have enjoyed sharing time with Dad on this video. I hope you have a better idea of what he did in his earlier years. And as mentioned earlier, Dad successfully completed many other projects in addition to the ones mentioned. There's just too many projects to mention, so I tried to cover the highlights of his career and some of the facilities that viewers might be familiar with. Now, many of these projects were very large and very expensive for the day. Penn High School was in excess of $40 million. Marriott's Hotel was in excess of $30 million. Woodridge Retirement Home and Nursing Home was in excess of $10 million. With all of this responsibility came many gray hairs and a great deal of stress for Dad. Regardless, he never went home and just sat in his easy chair. He was always busy volunteering his God-given gifts of carpentry to help others. It was usually a family member or maybe improving something at the church, the North Liberty Church of Christ, where he attended all of his adult life, and still does. He even had his own workroom at the church, which was commonly referred to as George's office. Now the following list, it's labeled page four in the attachments at the end of this video. This is a list of non-commercial projects that dad also helped with, most of which were volunteer work, some before, during, and after his commercial career. First off, as seen in the videos, they constructed, mom and dad constructed a new garage and added two bedrooms and a bathroom to their very first home on New Road back in the early 50s. Then they went on in 58 and 59 to construct their one and only new home on New Road, just two doors down from their original home. Dad also helped make the North Liberty Church of Christ a reality in 1973 when they moved from in town out to north of town in North Liberty. He also was instrumental in helping with the additions in 1986 and 2003 as well. He also helped all of his children with their projects. He helped Alan and Paula renovate their first home on Kern Road, South Bend, Indiana, and later helped build their new home on Sycamore Road in North Liberty, Indiana. He helped Brian and Nancy clear up in Kenosha, Wisconsin with multiple aspects of their new home construction, including framing, 
trim, and hanging doors. He helped Tom and Darla renovate their first home on State Road 4 in Lakeville, Indiana, and later helped them renovate their newer house on Osborne Road in North Liberty, Indiana. He helped Evan and Patty renovate their first home, where we still live. In fact, I'm sitting in it right now. Added a two-story addition to that house, and later helped construct a two-story gambrel roof garage. He worked on many of his grandchildren's homes, including home improvements and also additions and re-roofings and so forth. After retirement, Dad worked part-time for Castile Construction at Memorial Hospital. The list goes on and on, but I think you get the idea that Dad was a busy man all of his adult life. And lastly, I want to thank Dad for cooperating in the making of this video. I think it helped him to remember many things that had long since slipped his mind. And at times, it was difficult for me to keep up with him when we were out on the road, especially when he hiked up the Chapin Street Bridge. You would have thought he was once again 40 years old. I also want to thank my son-in-law, Patrick Andrews, who consolidated all of my video files and turned them into a viewable video. Lastly, I hope this information demonstrates to all of us that Dad was always building something. And he had an excellent work ethic. He has many projects to reflect back on and to be very proud of. And to summarize, a great deal of hard work and a successful career that is just loaded with major accomplishments. Mom always said it best. Good job, George. Thanks for listening, everybody.